Okay. Well, now that we've talked about the challenges in project management and fundamentals of project management and Agile, uh, we're going to dive into our case study, which is our application of uh, Agile approach and, and Scrum to our work uh, for FEMA and the Response uh, Geospatial Office. And this slide here shows some pictures of, of FEMA and, and the work we do in the kind of environment that we're operating in. We work primarily serving uh, headquarters, uh, but uh, they serve all the regional offices as well as uh, joint uh, field offices and, and interagency uh, partners, including state locals um, who are all involved in uh, responding to disasters. So. Um, these images here show pretty typical uh, work settings for us, building uh, applications, communicating with uh, other team members, and, and some of these pictures show the National Response Coordination Center, where uh, some of our data outputs and applications are, are utilized uh, during these incidents. So this slide here um, kind of gives an overview of the architecture, the, the data and software architecture that produces all of these data uh, applications and, and data outputs uh, for this work. So um, just to give you a, a lay of the land here, um, you can see on the left-hand side, real-time hazard data services coming in from authoritative sources from uh, other uh, federal agencies, say, on floods and tornadoes and wildfires. And then information on different lifelines there across the bottom on you know, power and communications and transportation and so forth. And then in the center of a, a mix of technology uh, that integrates all this this information, and then makes that available uh, to uh, a whole series of different uh, web-based analytical tools and data products that our team is involved in building. And you can see there are some examples here for a variety of different missions from identifying a risk before an event, you know, who's going to be impacted, what's going to be impacted, and where, um, to uh, planning tools uh, during an event, uh, how much supplies need to be brought, uh, where should we evacuate those kinds of, uh, of tools and information, um, to uh, tools for assessing damage uh, after an event uh, and, re and monitoring the recovery uh, after a, a disaster, uh, to uh, tools and, and websites and uh, systems for uh, sharing information and data with uh, the public and interagency partners, as well as uh, to enable uh, vendors who may have data, uh, aerial imagery, satellite imagery, other kinds of analytical data sets uh, to integrate and, and share their data into FEMA. So there's a lot going on here. And, and this is really just to point out that uh, it's a highly complex technical uh, setting that we work in, uh, both to get information in and out, and then um, the kinds of uh, organizations internally and externally that we're interfacing with. And, and you can imagine in a, in, a, in a disaster setting how challenging that might be. Yeah, and, and in order to support this wide range of work, we have our team is very cross-functional. So we have web developers and, and a cloud architect and a remote sensing expert and um, a data management person. And so um, we've really had to adapt this agile um, technique to work for not um, a dev team where everyone is sort of developing a specific piece of code for one project, but everyone's actually working on completely separate tasks unrelated to each other but we still have to coordinate and provide um, deliverables on time within our sprint cycle. So um, it, we've found that it actually works well for a, a cross-functional team. Um, it's just, uh, it's, 
a challenge sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point is that I guess what this is showing is that we're not talking about a single project. Um, in this case, yeah. we're, we're talking about many projects, uh, a number of which may be simultaneous. Um, uh, we, we could pick out any one of these uh, sort of data tools at the top and talk about you know, the development of it, but I think it's helpful to see the, the, the totality of, of what we're involved in and, mm -hmm. and really why you know, moving to the approach we move to um, is so important. So here's uh, you know, some of the requirements we have working in this setting um, uh, for, for all projects really. Um, and that is, we need to be able to easily gather and maintain changing requirements for multiple projects. Um, we need to be able to communicate our requirements to a distributed team um, and subcontractors and stakeholders uh, that may be in multiple agencies and organizations. We need to also provide an easy way to organize and sequence and assign tasks to our team members. We need a way to, for team members to be able to communicate their progress uh, back to uh, uh, the project managers and, and the customer, um, as well as uh, request assistance uh, where, the, where they need help on something. And then, you know, we also need uh, a way to systematically review our deliverables and our progress with the customer. So. Um, these are some of the kind of key requirements that, that we have working for FEMA, uh, but I think it would be true in any um, emergency management disaster kind of uh, scenario. So, yeah. yeah, and I'll just say that th this slide here um, is, is really the, a, a, a tailored scrum uh, that, that we applied um, to our work with FEMA, which, which Maddie uh, is our scrum master, which you can see there uh, in the center. And uh, please, uh, you know, explain how we did that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if you kind of think back to all of the terminology that Rob spoke through with agile and with project management and just kind of taking some of the best practices from each of those, but then projecting them onto emergency management uh, GIS support. So um, we have, I guess I'll just start from the, the left and move through. So the user stories, that would essentially be all of the uh, features or products or um, tasks, you know, large, broad uh, goals of the team that we need to support. And so those get broken down into discrete tasks, discrete cards or sticky notes, if you think back to the Kanban board and um, put into a backlog. And every two weeks, our team looks at the backlog and pulls high priority items into the sprint for sprint planning, um, as well as creating new cards based on um, the priorities for that sprint. Um, we also consider leaving some wiggle room for ad hoc tasks because one of the challenges that comes up in emergency management is um, you know, little to no notice, there's going to be something new coming in that needs to be done very high priority immediately. And so um, leaving a little bit of room in your sprint planning for taking on those ad hoc tasks can be really effective um, so that you don't get behind or too overwhelmed with too much work to complete during your sprint. Um, our sprints are two weeks. So, um, and we have Monday, Wednesday, Friday standups internally. So our team meets for less than 15 minutes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And we pop on a stand up, give a quick update about what you're working on, any challenges or blocks that you're facing with getting that work done. And any, um, any long conversation that starts to go on about any specific topic just indicates that maybe a separate meeting needs to be held to um, talk in more detail about something because those stand ups are really meant to be quick and efficient, get from get updates from each person on the team. Um, and then, you know, the, the sort of discussion tangents that occur are really useful indicators for when you realize you need to talk more in depth about something that's come up. Um, and so at the end of our two week sprint cycle, we have a sprint demo. Um, we invite all of the contractors, uh, subcontractors on our contract, as well as the federal staff um, 
and anyone can demo, including our team. Um, and we present visually with screen sharing um, and providing links and all that stuff, um, the work that was completed during the sprint cycle. Um, at the end of that meeting, we will take any feedback or new priorities for the next sprint coming ahead. And then we will start back with our backlog and sprint planning and um, do it again. So it's very iterative. We do have sprint retrospectives um, every couple of months, I would say. And we have changed um, a lot of things about our process based on feedback that we've gotten at those retrospectives. So a lot of really great ideas have come from team members about how to make things more efficient, how to, um, for example, incorporating the ad hoc task requests into our sprint planning. Um, so that's how it has worked for us. And so far we've been really successful. Yeah, I agree. And, um, you know, we, we've been at this just on, on this engagement for, for, for how long, Maddie? I mean, a number of, of sprints. Yeah, we're on sprint 45 and sprints are two weeks long. So that's about 90 weeks going close to two years. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and this is formally, at least we had mm -hmm. operated this way to a degree internally, but I think what was so transformational and making it more formal is engaging with the customer in this case so that they could participate. And again, that's one of the, the features that Agile brings is they're, they're uh, helping to define the requirements and, and then in these, in these demo sprint, uh, review meetings we have at the end of each sprint, they're reviewing the work all together with the team and it's just regularized that process and really, really brought them into it. I think um, it's been uh, very helpful and um, has improved uh, our work too. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we'll do a walkthrough of some of this uh, in real time. I'm gonna pass, stop sharing, pass this over to Maddie to, to do that. All right, so the first tool that I wanted to kind of demo is Miro. And this is one of those collaborative tools that's great for virtual whiteboarding and brainstorm sessions. And um, especially when you have really big teams who are sort of separate and working together remotely. So um, some of the features here is you can create these really big, complicated collaborative boards. Um, and when you open the board, you'll start with having this little map down here in the bottom right. And then you can zoom in to certain parts of the board um, to get a closer look. So for example, when you first join this board, you come to this little uh, warm up task here where you would just sort of place your name on a sticky note. That was just to get everyone kind of used to the way the board works. But when you add a sticky note onto the board, you have the ability to add a label to it. So you can export the board as a um, Excel spreadsheet and it'll tag all of the rows with the appropriate labels. If you need to do any kind of documentation with your brainstorming session, um, you can also add emojis. So it's a great way for people to sort of collaborate with each other. If they feel some type of emotion with something someone else put on the board, they can tag an emoji onto it. Um, you can also draw on the board. You can add um, shapes onto the board. You can um, just sort of construct these really incredible um, meeting routes, taking people from brainstorming topic to brainstorming topic. Um, there's a lot of really um, great stuff that you can do in Miro. And then there's also templates. Um, let me see if I can find how to pull up what the templates look like. So when you're creating a new board, there are all these templates in here. So you don't have to build it from scratch, but there's retrospective templates, um, you know, tables, mind maps, voting templates. That's great. Brainstorming, strategy and planning, research and design. And then there's all these different agile workflow templates that you can use for your brainstorming session. Great. Any, any questions or thoughts on Miro before moving on? All right, great. So that's Miro and Google Jamboard is very um, similar. 
you want to check out another tool and you have G Suite as an option, Google Jamboard would be one to check out. Um, and then I wanted to show you our sprint planning process. So um, here's our backlog or our on the radar list. So this just contains some tasks that are coming up. And then for each sprint um, at the very beginning, our team will bring over cards um, or create new cards for tasks that need to be completed during the sprint. Um, every card has to have a label. And so we like to label our tasks by sort of the topic of work that it falls under. Um, you can also assign a priority to your cards, um, whether or not you've started or completed the task. Um, start and end date. This is useful if you want to convert your Kanban board into a Gantt chart and some kind of progress report. If you're keeping track of deadlines, um, it'd be great to implement some standards and start and end dates there. You can include descriptions as well as put a checklist. So if your task uh, has a couple subtasks, then you could break those down into a checklist. Um, our team will always add an attachment to a completed card. So you can add files and images. Um, and comments, you can comment on each other's boards. So um, another way to use this is sort of like a task tracking. If you wanted to uh, task someone on your team using the board, you could create the card for them and then assign it to that team member. Um, so this is how we do this in um, Sprint uh, Microsoft Planner. Uh, but we also used to use Trello um, before we migrated over into Planner. And Trello, I just wanted to show because it has a lot of great features as well. Um, you can label cards just like you can in Planner. Um, and a lot of similar features, you can add descriptions, you can add um, labels here, you can add a checklist to your board. Um, let me find what the, the checklist sort of looks like here. So you can add subtasks and check them off as you go. If you wanted to keep tabs on a card, if it was very critical to you, you could watch it and then you would get email updates as that card moved its way through the board and um, updates were made on that card. Um, you can assign cards points. So we talked about that point system where maybe a day's worth of work is one point or eight days worth of work would be eight points. Um, and again, you can add attachments and a lot of features in Trello as well. It's great, it shows uh... You know how we're we're using this stuff in action. I mean, maybe just comment about um, you know how often you use it and that the team uses it throughout their day and their week. You know, and and even the customer engagement. What what's that like? Um, our team really uses it daily. Um, it's you know when we are given a task by the customer, it, it gets translated into a card. I would say pretty near immediately. Um, Anything we're working on or updating on in a standup should be represented on our task management board. So, um, and actually during our standups, we will screen share this and you can filter it. So if I'm giving my update, I would actually, um, you know, this would be screen shared so the whole team could see it. And I would filter by me because I'm the one giving the update. And so if I'm, if I'm speaking to a task that's not shown on the board, I would then need to go and like make a task just to make sure that all of the work that we're completing is being tracked in a system like this. Yeah, great, thank you. Sure, and the last thing I just wanted to show is, um, as I mentioned, at the end of our sprint cycle, we have a sprint demo and those are now recorded and we are uploading them and making them available in a password protected um, website. So everyone on our team, including other contractors and federal staff, can um, go back in here if they needed to reference something that was demoed in a past sprint demo. Um, it is now available for them to go back and um, review. That's so, wonderful. Yeah. So if you click one of those links, I'll, I'll spare you. But if you click one of those links, it pops up a little um, movie and you can just watch it right there in the browser. <laughs>